What's up, everyone? Welcome to Fan Sports New York Varsity. I'm your host, Frank Langella, joined by my co-host, Marsolio Langella. And Mars, this is our week three preview for Section 1 AA. Football season is in full effect. We've gone through a couple weeks already, and you can tell, you know, the matchups are getting more and more serious. Uh, we're getting closer and closer to kind of looking at those league rankings, league, league standings, start talking about playoffs soon, but... Again, let's start off, Mars. Uh, welcome you to the show, man. How's it going? Yeah, it's going well, man. Uh, the fact that we are, you know, progressing to next week, we're getting some really good matchups this week, and I think the fact that we are, you know, out like you said before, that we're getting closer to the playoffs. As week by week, we get we start having to talking about playoff pictures and playoff outlook. So, get me interested to see what happens next. Yeah, absolutely, and we want to welcome our fans. We appreciate you guys for joining us once again if you're new to us uh, we cover section one football make sure i mean if you don't know us by now come on now uh make sure you guys follow and hit that subscribe button for future content um and how the show is going to work we're going to talk about the matchups on slate we're going to go over five of the top matchups um this week and then we're going to pick all the games at the end But before we get started i just want to make sure um, make sure you guys give a thumbs up and subscribe for future content. You can also get access to our content via our website at famsportsny.com. Um, and if you are interested in donating to our cause, um, and we appreciate any donations from our fans, uh, you can access our Patreon in the description below and via our website. But now that's done, Mars, let's talk about the matchups on Slate, and then we'll go through about five of them. Uh, we'll do some uh, breakdown on those. And then we'll pick the games at the end. And uh, the games on slate this week are Arlington 2-1 at Scarsdale. That is 2-0. at oh. That is a non-league game. We have Yonkers Brave 0-3 at Ossining, um, who's 1-2. That is a league game. We have Mamaronic 2-0 at White Plains, who's 0-2. That is a league game. North Rockland 1-2 at Suffern, who is 1-1. That is a league game. RCK 0-2 at Carmel, who is 2-0. That is a league game. New Rochelle two and one at John J East Fishkill, who's one and one. That is a league game, and Yonkers Force at Mount Vernon um, is also a league game. That is actually at Mount Vernon's new stadium, um, and we'll talk about that going forward. But Mars, the first matchup I want to talk about is a non-league game: Arlington two and one at Scarsdale, who is two and zero. Oh. Um, interesting matchup here again. I think every team has a one crossover. Uh, to the other side, and this is Arlington and Scarsdale facing each other. Last week, Arlington won at North Rockland. Scarsdale won um, at Ossining. And when you look at these two teams historically, Arlington is 4-1 and one versus Scarsdale. They have won two straight versus them, including a win last year, 39-12. to 12. Um, So a pretty uh, definitive win by Arlington. And let's start with Arlington, Mars. I, I got to say, I think Arlington has looked very strong the last two weeks. They have wins over Suffern and North Rockland. They've outscored their opponents 76-6. to six. Um, And again, I think Arlington, and I said this before the season, I think they are the favorites uh, this year. Um, and they have kind of showed when they're clicking, they are tough to beat. And they've made quite a statement these last two weeks. And when I look at the offensive side of the ball, you know, there's kind of, a couple different modes that Arlington likes to go into. They'll kind of go into the spread mode and do some of the options, some of the power read stuff. You know, they'll kind of do some of the RPO quick game action. And then they'll go into some of their heavy stuff, right? So they do have different, um, they can hit you with multiple things. And I do think the number one thing is that kind of heavy downhill running style. I think that is their clear cut, you know, number one identity out of the three, but they have things that, that they can run out of each one of them. And I think handing the ball to guys like Shafe and Lynch running downhill with one tight end, with two tight ends, um, you know, getting those big linemen to move and down block and kind of hit the C gap and then hit the edge, you know, has been really good for them. And I do think that they need to continue with that and make that the priority. But I got to give a lot of credit to their quarterback, Resigno Mars. He was really good last week. Uh, three touchdowns, three passing touchdowns last week. Um, the week before, he capped off a huge run versus Suffern that sparked that offense. He is the spark plug for this offense. Um, he's a big play threat guy. Two touchdowns to Lavello, Jordan, McGann, uh, the big tight end in the red zone. And, you know, it hasn't been perfect, but listen, he's had another really strong game. Two weeks ago, he was running the ball. This week, passing the ball. And, you know, if we can continue with that run game and then and Resigno then hitting some of these big play, pass plays off of RPO, quick game, and the play action, you know, this offense is tough to stop. 
Um, and I think the formula is simple. Scarsdale, they're bigger than Scarsdale. I think they're probably stronger up front than Scarsdale. And I think they're going to try to muscle them. Um, muscle them and then get Resigno out on the edge and off the play action is a pretty good formula. Defensively, I've been even more impressed defensively, to be quite honest. I mean, they've allowed six points um, or less the last two weeks. And they forced three turnovers last week. They had an INT for a touchdown last week by Price. They've done a good job of preventing the big play, um, which hurt them in week uh, zero. But the last two weeks, they've done a good job of preventing those big plays. And, you know, they're going up against an athletic quarterback and running against that option offense, Mar. So responsibility football is going to be huge and winning those early downs. And I, I would imagine Arlington is going to be very aggressive. They're going to try to get those negative plays, especially on early downs, get Scarsdale in an uncomfortable situation, which is second and third and long, um, where now they can start dialing up some stuff and maybe cause some turnovers. Uh, Mars, what are your thoughts on Arlington? Yeah, I mean, uh, the fact that Arlington has been straight up dominating the last two weeks, scoring, like you said, 76 to 6 on the last two opponents, and I really like the way the offense has been playing. I mean, the fact is they've been kind of checking off all the all the wants that you want to see for an offense, where you put them in the spread, and they, they can run a lot of those RPOs and, and option type of plays, and then you go in the heavy, they just drain the clock, they just pound the rock, and they've just been dominating up front. I think the offensive line has been, in my opinion, probably one of the best offensive lines in all of Section 1. They've been moving people around, right? Their size is you know massive, and they, they've been showing it. I think that they have a lot of playmakers, like I was, you said, Chafe uh, and Lynch, and then obviously Rosigno has just been consistent. I think... We gotta mention after that, uh, you know, the, in the team preview that if Rosino is consistent, then this offense is gonna be chugging along. And I think that he's he has been playing well, and I think that he has been showing that he is probably the bigger playmaker on this team, in my opinion. Um, so I think that if he's playing well, then he's a, the offense is moving right. Defensively, they've also been very good, and I think that they just been like you said, the bend but don't break type of defense. And they just been, you know, I think the biggest thing for them this week is just being disciplined, right? If they can stay disciplined. Force the losses on the early downs and really force, you know, scores have to have to do like a big play to get a first down. You know, they'll they'll have the advantage here. And I think Arlington has the ability to do that. Yeah, and when we move to Scars there, Mars, offensively, they've scored 80 points the first two weeks of the season. All right. This is another offense that's been very explosive. Defensively, they've given up 36 points, um, which hasn't, you know, it hasn't been too bad. Um, but looking at Scarsdale as a whole offensively. You know, they've been explosive. They've been efficient. It obviously starts with their quarterback and Colby Baldwin. He's had six touchdowns, Mars, and over 260 yards um, in the first two weeks of the year. And he is the spark plug. I mean, you know, he is a guy who every defense is going to hone in on, and he's their biggest play guy. Once he gets out on the edge, there's not many guys who can catch him. So he's a very athletic quarterback who's been making some smart reads. And uh, But he's not the only one. Their running back, Killian, is another guy. He had 67 rushing yards and a touchdown last week. You know, I think Scarsdale is going to have to be creative. I don't think, you know, again, they're going to probably play with some tempo. You're going to have to see some twist options. You're going to have to see some counters. You're going to have to see kind of the full boat here because, you know, Arlington is going to be big. They're going to be hard to move. This offensive line is not massive, but they move pretty well. And so I think getting them moving left and right horizontally will give you the best chance because I don't think you're going to just run downhill on them. So it's going to be huge to get out on the edge for Scarsdale. And maybe, you know, if they can get on the edge, if they can work some of these counters, maybe the play action will open things up for Arlington. Because you know what? You know, we know they're going to bring in some linebacker stunts. We know they're going to try to give some heavy boxes and force Scarsdale to pass. You're going to have to hit a couple of them uh, to kind of get the defense guessing a little bit. So that's going to be really important um, against them. Defensively, Mars, I thought they were strong last week, but they struggled the week before to stop some big pass plays against White Plains. And, you know, I think Arlington, like I like I said earlier, I think they're going to try to test the strength of Scarsdale and try to run downhill. But don't be surprised if early on they do some play action pass and take some deep shots and try to throw to some of these receivers with Resigno um, throwing the ball who, who did a pretty good job last week. So, we're you know, we're going to see they're going to test the discipline of this Scarsdale secondary not to be staring in the backfield. Um, so, you know, again, they got to look at guys like Will DeGurzio. He had 13 tackles last week. He's going to have to be very active again. Noah Chappelle. Um, kind of in that front seven is going to have to cause some pressure. And they have to have a hat on Resigno at all times um, because this is a guy, you know, when he takes off running, um, can cause a lot of damage. It could be backbreaking. You can have everyone covered and he'll take off and get a first down. Really hurts. Uh, Mars, what are your thoughts on Scarsdale? Yeah, I mean, Scarsdale's also been pretty explosive. I know we talked about how Arlington's been scoring a lot of points, but 
Technically, Scarzell scored more points on the offensive side in the last two weeks, and I think that Scarzell has done, you know, a very good job at trying to open up what they can do and, and really try to, you know, show off their skill ability. I think they, they have a lot of guys like, like you said, Baldwin and, and Killian have both been very impressive so far this yeah. season, and I think that they have ability to get to the outside and show off some athleticism. But the question is going to be: Can their, can their offensive line stand up to this massive? Uh, you know, front seven that we see from Arlington, and I think that's going to be a difficult thing for them to to kind of match with. I think, like you said, Scarzell might need to open up with some play action passes because I don't think Arlington is really going to expect that from them. I think they're going to try to like, I, in my opinion, Scarzell needs to throw the kitchen sink at them offensively. I think they're going to have to give them a lot of different looks, a lot of different types of plays, and you know, Arlington, they're going to have to make Arlington have to think a little bit. And if they could do that, they might catch them off guard and come up with a big play. Defensively, like you said, I think they're going to have to try to stop the make the downhill running because I think that's going to be Ellington's main bread and butter of this game because they know that they're big and they're going to try to show you. So I think Arlington Arlington's going to be a really tough opponent for Scarsdale. It's going to be interesting to see what happens with this game. Yeah, my matchup to watch, I'm looking at quarterback Kobe Baldwin and the backs of Scarsdale versus these Arlington linebackers. And they like to send them internally. Um, you know, these linebackers can be very aggressive at times. You know, can these counters work? It could be an option, especially if Arlington is very aggressive defensively to catch them on some counters. Um, so I'm interested to see that matchup. All right, Mars, let's go to the next game we want to break down, and that is Mamaronick, 2-0 and at White Plains, who's 0-2. This is a league game. Last week, Mamaronick won versus John J. Fishkill in a uh, very interesting matchup. White Plains lost at Suffern. And uh, between these two teams, Mamaronick is 4-3 and three versus White Plains. Mamaronick, again, back and forth, pretty pretty good. Mamaronick won last year, though, 33-20. to 20. Um, And let's start with Mamaronick. They have scored 84 points, Mars, in the last two weeks, defensively only giving up 21, so pretty good on both sides of the ball. And offensively, you know, they are as advertised, Mars. We talked about this before the season started. They have a lot of weapons, and they can kind of beat you multiple ways but the big thing Mamaronic likes is space, right? They want to get their playmakers in space. Um, they believe their guy can beat your guy one-on-one. Um, it's obviously such with their quarterback in Cox, who's had six touchdowns this season, five passing the ball. And he's a guy who can hurt you with his legs. But he is he's really trying to throw the ball. Even when he buys time, he's trying to throw the football, but he can hurt you with his legs. And he can sling it, especially on the move. Um, with some of the quick game and some of the deep stuff. But Hamilton is another guy, Mars. 208 yards, four touchdowns. He's averaging nine yards per carry um, when he has the ball in his hand. So this is a guy who can carry the load. He hasn't been – didn't get a lot of carries last week. Um, but, uh, again, really strong start to the season. And they have some reliable guys out on the outside. One guy, Rhett Chambers, Mars, he's had now a touchdown reception in two straight games. Um, when I look at White Plains, they have given up some big plays in the running game and at times in the passing game. So, you know, Mamaronic has opportunities here. They can get some guys in space. And I think especially running the ball, they're going to have some opportunities to hit some big plays um, this week. Defensively, again, solid start to the season. I always said that if Mamaronic can play some consistent defense, they're going to win a lot of games. Um, so far, so good. Um, but they're going to have to deal with some of these White Plains weapons in space. But The thing that White Plains hurt White Plains, and I'll talk about this when we get there, is turnovers, right? So, you know, if they can, you know, they're going to have some opportunities there because White Plains like to throw the ball. When you like to throw the ball a lot, sometimes it ends up getting into dangerous situations, and Mamaronic's got to capitalize on it. And, you know, when you look at a young quarterback, they want to try to get some pressure on. So I'm looking at guys like Bennett, TJ Smith, who two weeks ago had a really strong uh, performance. Prince Alvarado had an interception last week. And how about the performance by Jake Ramsey? I mean, this guy, 13 tackles, two and a half sacks, a forced fumble, and a fumble recovery last week in one game. I mean, Mamaronic is showing that, hey, they have weapons on offense, but they also have some playmakers on defense. And if they can just be consistent and tackle in space, I think they're going to have another strong performance this week, Mars. What are your thoughts on Mamaronic? Yeah, I mean, I think we both said that Mamaronic would be a top-level offense. I think you said they would be the top, the, the highest or top two offense in Section 1 AA, and they are consistently being that currently. I think that they have a lot of weapons on this squad, and I really like the way that Cox and, and Hamilton are both playing. Uh, they've been very impressive so far, and they can really show that they can hit the big plays, especially when they get in the open space, uh, because they just, they just have so many athletes on this offense. I think defensively, they've also been pretty solid too, but I think, you know, when you're looking at how they combat against White Plains, it's really about literally the big plays from White Plains athletes, but also just continually forcing turnovers. And I think they can do that if they bring the heat with this young quarterback. 
Yeah, and going to White Plains offensively, honors, we know we, they can move the ball. I think White Plains over the last few years, and including this year, have shown if they get enough possessions, um, they can hit some big plays. And I think up front, how are they going to handle, you know, they have some size, but how are they going to handle this Mamaronic front? And I do think they're going to see a lot of empty looks. You're seeing a lot of trips where they can kind of create some match, matchup issues, um, which is what they want to do. And, and a guy like Graham, who I talked about him before the season started, he's one of their best athletes, one of their most electric players, you know, but he's not the only one, right? So they got a couple of different guys who can win one-on-ones. And I think that's what they want. They're going to try to create some space. They're going to try to pick their matchups see a mix of the quick game and some of the deep stuff, but they got to hold up in protection because turnovers has been hurting white Plains. They had another, they had three interceptions last week, which were absolute killers for them. Um, so obviously, you know, protecting the ball is going to be huge because you want, again, you want to be when you're a fast pace offense, big play offense, you don't want to waste possessions, right? So that's going to be huge for white Plains defensively. I think the number one priority is stopping Hamilton. They've struggled to stop the run. Um, and he has a big opportunity that he can have a big game. And, and keeping Cox in the pocket is going to be huge because when he breaks the pocket, um, I think that's when he's at his most dangerous. Not so much because he, he can run the ball, but you know I think when he hits his biggest throws is when he's kind of rolling out of the pocket um, and getting out on the edge. And so, again, if they could try to tackle these Mamaronic players in space, I think they have to bail out to stop the run and hope their DBs can make some plays out there um, and maybe get another turnover to get their offense an extra possession is going to be huge. Um, Mars, what are your thoughts on White Plains? Yeah, White Plains is also like, uh, I guess you would say, you know, compared to last year, they aren't as good when it comes to, you know, big plays, but they still have a lot of athletes on the squad. I think that, you know, it's kind of interesting how Marinick became, I mean, they were pretty solid last year in offense, but, you know, White Plains was a top level offense last year. It's almost like they kind of are still like trying to match that same level. Now, Brandon, 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 yeah, the, the, granted, I think what Marinick has a lot, I think, more all-around talent on the offensive end, but White Plains still has some guys that can make big plays, and I think their speed is what is their biggest benefit. I think the big, biggest concern I have is whether or not this offensive line can keep up with Marinick's front seven, and I think if they can, and they open up some lanes for their back, it could cause some issues for this Marinick defense. And I think for White Plains, it's really about, like you said, slowing down this rush offense, and trying to keep Cox inside the box, right? Trying to make him have to throw the ball and just beat you because, like you said, he's a game breaker when he gets to the outside. When he's on the rollouts, when he's on the move, he is just deadly. So I, it's really going to be up to White Plains to slow him down and really just keep him in the box. Yeah, my matchup to watch, I'm looking at these Marinick wide receivers versus the White Plains DBs. I keep talking about the rush attack. I think those two guys, you know, this rush offense – and versus some loaded boxes by White Plains. I'm going to see who can win those one-on-one matchups on the outside. Um, let's go to the next game, Morris, and that is North Rockland 1-2 and two at Suffern, who's 1-1. One and one. This is a league game. These two teams have played each other a bunch of times over the years. Um, last week, North Rockland lost versus Arlington. Suffern won versus White Plains. Um, and historically, North Rockland has owned this matchup 12-3 and three versus Suffern, but Suffern has won the last two uh, meetings including a win last year, 27 to 25. And let's start with North Rockland, Mars. It was a definitely a struggle last week. Uh, no question about it. Um, they, it was close for a half, but, you know, Arlington kind of put things away. And they, North Rockland couldn't get into a consistent um, tempo, especially offensively. You know, the big thing for this offense is to get into the room. They want to play with tempo. They want to spread things out. They want to kind of use their numbers as leverage. But... It also doesn't help that they're playing against Monroe, Woodbury, and Arlington two out of the first three games of the season, right? So um, it's hard to get into rhythm. You're playing some tough opponents, but it doesn't get easier playing Suffer, right? So it starts again. Being ahead of the chains and not turning the ball over, which has been huge. They had three turnovers last week. Two of them were on special teams, but you're losing those possessions, um, and it hurts you getting into a rhythm, right? So the quarterback, Taliano, is really important in this offense, both using his arm and his legs. He had a passing touchdown last week. Ethan Farrar has been a big target for them. He had a receiving touchdown last week, but he's not the only one. They have Becker. Um, but they want to try to get this run game going, right? Savor, um, Vasquez, who was running the ball last week. They got to get some balance going um, and just staying on the field, right? And finishing drives is going to be really important. Too many drives have come up as empty possessions. Defensively, similar to the offense, it's about consistency. I saw at times in the second half versus Mount Vernon, they were really strong. In the first half versus Monroe Woodbury and Arlington, they were really strong. But 
the consistency just isn't fully there. And they're kind of a bend but don't break defense, but it feels like they kind of wore down last week. So that's obviously going to be really important. They gave up three passing touchdowns last week. Um, so, again, it, it's suffering who I don't think is as high a power passing offense um, this time around. But they're going to be tested in the run game. That's for sure. You know, the number one thing is got to stop Dorselli and Joseph. Uh, Mars, what are your thoughts on North Rockland? Yeah, North Rockland, I think, was obviously the fact that they played against Arlington. It was a really tough opponent. Um, and I think they just they haven't really found their groove yet. I feel like they haven't really been able to establish the run, they have, which also just kind of compounds it on itself on the pass as well. Like, you need to be efficient. You need to get some good yards up in the, uh, uh, just up on the early downs to at least get yourself in the momentum. And even completing those short routes, what else he held this offense uh, you know, tremendously. I think running the ball will open up the playbook a lot. Defensively, I think, like you said, it's like a, a mirror to the offense. Be consistent. You need to, you know, be, you know, like you said, don't bend, but don't, uh, you, know, you can bend, but don't break defense. Don't allow the big plays to happen, but you need to make stops when it gets to that third down, right? They've been struggling to, to really do that. And like you said, they just wore down and they just really couldn't compete with Owens in that aggressive near the end of the game. So I feel like it's really up to North Rockland to kind of slow down the pacing for their own benefit uh, and then really just establish the run to give themselves some more, uh, just more tempo on their side. They give themselves some consistency on this offense. Yeah, no, absolutely. I agree with you. And when I look at Suffern Mars, um, got their first win uh, last last week for Coach Muller. Um, offensively, they ran for over 290 yards last week. I mean, the rush attack was absolutely potent. I think that is the kind of the number one priority and their identity going forward. But that duo of Dorselli, who had 180 yards and two touchdowns, and Joseph, who had 110 yards and two touchdowns, that is a pretty nasty combination of strength and speed. Um, and I think that's going to try to continue that. But the question is, can they get some consistency out of the passing game uh, this week as well? And Palumbo had a passing touchdown last week. Can this offensive line deserves a lot of credit. When you rush for 290 yards, uh, you got to give a lot of credit to that offensive line. That means they're opening up holes and opening up lanes. Can they? Can this offensive line consistently open that against a North Rockland front seven, who I think is going to be very aggressive? Uh, I think they're going to stunt. I think they're going to try to create these negative plays. Um, defensively, last week, Mars forced three turnover, three INTs. You know, generating pressure is going to be huge. Snell, Lou, Camacho all had INTs. Harris is another really important defensive back for them. You know, to me, when I, you know, North Rockland's going to try to test this secondary. I think they want to try to throw the ball um, against Suffern. But I'm looking at this linebacking crew for uh, Suffern, who I think is pretty strong. And they're going to have to probably win some numbers battles that aren't in their favor especially if they try to cover some of these wide receivers um there's going to be some light boxes and these linebackers are going to have to compensate for that so i'm interested to see how suffering handles this are they going to kind of mix it up are they going to try to take away the pass and rely on their front six um, to stop the run it's going to be really interesting to see how they play it um, but they're going to have to tackle in space no matter how they play it whether it's you know light boxes or heavy boxes um but mars what are your thoughts on suffering no, I really suffered. I really like the way the the, the rush offense really was. I mean, they dominated. Yeah. But like you said, the uh, the pass offense kind of struggled. They just couldn't find their footing. I think they need to be more consistent on both sides of this offensive, you know, you know, you know, play calling. Just because I think that if you're running way too often, you're really gonna narrow what you can do. No, it worked. So I'm not gonna say. Yeah, I'm not saying you keep running. I'm not saying like don't run the ball. What I'm saying is you need to be more consistent passing it. Like so, at least then. It, it kind of opens up what you can do on offense, and now it doesn't basically make defenses know, all right, this team can only run, right? And they're going to start sacking the box and make your life even more difficult when you're trying to establish the pass. So I think if they can be more consistent on both sides of that, I think that would be beneficial. And defensively, I mean, obviously you're trying to, like, you know, force more, you know, more turnovers. I think they did very well last week, but they need to consistently do this. And I think that the big question I have is whether or not this pass rush they're really the front four, you know, the front, the guys who are going to really send the heat. If they can really make a big play, especially when, you know, they're going to test, they're going to test your secondary. If you, they can make the plays and allow your guys to have, you know, play in zone more often and really try to cover these passes, I think that's going to be more beneficial to your defense and give your guys more time on offense and, you know, hopefully just keep pounding the rock. Um, I also think they're going to run a lot of jet stuff uh, against Suffer North Rockland is. But my matchup to watch, when you look for a consistency in offense, when you're trying to get on a rhythm, 
you got to kind of rely on this offensive line. And this offensive line for North Rockland needs to step up against a pretty solid suffering front seven. Um, and so, you know, again, if you want to try to run the ball, you're trying to have more consistent drives, they need the offensive line to step up. And so that's the matchup that I'm looking at. All right, Mars, let's go to the next matchup I want to talk about. Yonkers Force, 2-1 and one at Mount Vernon, who's 1-1. One and one. This is a league game. Again, this game is at the new Mount Vernon Stadium, and if you haven't seen pictures of it, they've done a pretty fantastic job putting that together. Uh, looks like a legit stadium, man. And um, last week, Yonkers Force lost to Carmel, Mount Vernon won versus RCK. And these two teams, obviously, you know, Yonkers Force is kind of a new program um, over the last couple of years. Mount Vernon, they're 1-0, and, um, and that was a, a matchup last year. They won 44-24 to um, against Yonkers Force. But let's start with Yonkers for us, Mars. Um, I thought offensively last week, and I know, you know, Carmel pulled away from them um, after the first drive. They didn't score again. But I thought the offense made some plays last week against a very aggressive Carmel defense that likes to bring pressure, right? And these quarterbacks I was extremely impressed with um, faced a lot of heat, stood in the pocket, rolled out when they needed to, and they were pretty accurate. I mean, Martinez, he was 6-for-6 six for, six for over 100 yards and a touchdown. He's had three touchdowns over the last two weeks. Their quarterback, Olkers, he had two passing touchdowns two weeks ago. I think he was 10 for 16 last week. So they didn't put up a lot of points, but they showed a lot of grit. And these quarterbacks really led that way. But And their wide receiver, Aquino, you know, Carmel did a good job of preventing big plays from him, but he still had six catches for 55 yards and a couple big third downs. Um, I mean, the week prior, Mars, he had 209 receiving yards and two touchdowns. But this offense obviously relies on the big – pass plays, right? And they, they rely on their quarterbacks a lot to run the ball, whether it's short yards run, outside runs. Um, you know, they put a lot on their quarterback's shoulders and they want to try to hit some deep balls. And I think that's going to be kind of where they go back to on Mount Vernon. Mount Vernon was very aggressive defensively. They like to blitz. Um, it's going to leave one-on-one matchups. These corners are aggressive. I think they're going to try to test if they can get into some max protections. They're going to try to take some deep shots with their receivers. And I think they'll have some opportunities. Um, Defensively, Mars, I think the big thing is preventing the big play. They struggled to stop the run last week versus Carmel's front. Now, granted, I do the Mount Vernon's got some size as well, but I don't think they have the same type of strength that Carmel's rush attack has. So, you know, we're just gonna see how Yonkers Forest kind of matches up against some of the speed of Mount Vernon, which they do have a lot of. Um, so it's gonna be interesting to see how they match up against some of those skill guys. Um, effectively, Ben Stevens is a guy who's had a real strong two weeks, three sacks over the last two weeks, Mars. So he's a guy to look for on Yonkers Forest. Um, what are your thoughts on them? Yeah, yeah I, feel I feel like the, the offense, offense last week was, was, was very great. I mean, I mean they, they, they were like always tough. tough. They were always sticking around, around and, and I, thought I thought they were extremely efficient on passes. passes. I, I thought that they had obviously the speed to make big plays, plays but like you said, Carlson and Eaton, the quarterbacks just stood in the pocket and made a really nice throw consistently. And you know, no, they, they were, you know, they were kind of just doing, doing well. They were picking apart, apart especially in the very beginning. They, they were, I would not say picking apart, apart, but they, they were essentially like being efficient. In what they needed. Yeah, and they took what the defense gave them. Um, yeah. They gave them space. They took it. The wide receivers got hit. They held onto the ball. Um, and I was impressed with those quarterbacks. They were very and, calm. And, at the, end of, day, at at the, the end, end of the day, day Carl was sitting in the heat, and you know, you know they, they were relying on the secondary to make big plays, plays and you know, they, they, you know, these receivers were catching contested, contested, you know, contested, contested catches. catches. I mean, they were they, they were making plays when they need, need to, and the quarterbacks, quarterbacks were showing some really you know tough throws, and, and they were being you know very they're throwing very well. Defensively, like you said, I think that they just honestly just struggled off against Carl. Um, that when you're looking at Mount Vernon, they won't have the same size as you know, they're pretty big, but they're not to the, like you said, the strength. I think the question is going to be can they match the speed, right? You know, are they going to be able to contain some of these big playmakers that Mount Vernon has? And if they can, it'll be a pretty interesting game. Yeah, absolutely. And when I go to Mount Vernon, Mars, I mean, we talked about it, they have explosive players. Um, and one guy who jumps off the screen to me is is Jaden Hamilton. He had 161 all-purpose yards last week, including three touchdowns. And this is a guy, if you get him in space, there's not many guys who are going to catch him. He's one of their most explosive players. He's deadly out in space. And their quarterback, he also was very – I'm going to talk about the other quarterbacks, but Isaiah Dadier uh, um, of Mount Vernon, he was 10 of 12 for two touchdowns last week. Um, very efficient. And you kind of saw that balance on offense, running the ball and throwing it. Um, for Sean Boyd, he had a receiving touchdown and an INT on the other side of the ball last week as well. Um, this is an offense that if they can hold up up front, stay on their blocks, they have explosive players who can make plays. 
Um, so this is going to be an interesting quarterback duel going on and, and some explosive players on both sides of the ball. Defensively, Mars, um, they have a couple guys who also stepped up for them. Now, they were also a bend but don't break defense at times. RCK moved the ball, but they made big enough plays and big moments to kind of stop drives and force turnovers. Um, Carmel uh, Yitzkin, Yitzak, he had eight tackles, two sacks, and a forced fumble. He was very active. I mentioned Boyd had an INT. Can they stop these quarterback runs, these design quarterback runs, um, kind of with all these H-backs and, and sniffers, and then want to go into the spread, can they stop these deep patterns, right? It's going to be really important for them um, to match up with these Yonkers Force wide receivers. Mars, what are your thoughts on uh, Mount Vernon? I think, I think offensively, offensively they, they have, have a lot of weapons, weapons that can make big plays. plays. I think they, they have, have a lot of speed, and I really, really think, think that they can be dangerous in open space. space. I, think I think the, the question is going to be whether or not the offensive line, line can open up lanes and really just, just Get, get some, get their, their playmakers some space, space to work with. If, if they, they can, can, I think their offense will be just fine. Defensively, I think, like you said, it's stopping the quarterback run. I think, you know, obviously, uh, Yonkers Force has a lot of ability, right? Yeah, especially the quarterback position, and I think their receivers have been making great plays. The question is going to be, can they, can they take away some of these you know, components or, or methods which these quarterbacks can make a lot of plays? And like I said, Yonkers showed, uh, Yonkers Force showed a lot of grit in their offense. And, and Mount Vernon's got to show that same level, level of grit, grit, especially on the defensive side. side. So, so it's going to be interesting to see what happens here. Yeah, they took it. Bianca's board took advantage of the quick game because of the pressure that Carmel brought. Mount Vernon likes to bring pressure, right? Can they take that same advantage this time around? You got to hit the short stuff and then at times take occasional deep ones. But my matchup, Mars, I'm looking at these Yonkers force wide receivers versus these Mount Vernon DBs. The DBs from Mount Vernon has some speed to them, right? And they're ready to play physical with you. That's going to be a very interesting matchup. All right, Mars. Game of the week time. Nourishell, two and one at John J. East Fishko, who's one and one. It feels like this has been a growing rivalry over the years. This is a league matchup. Last week, Nourishell won versus Yonkers Brave. John J. East Fishko lost versus Mamarinick. And historically, Mars Nourishell, 11 and one versus John J. Since 2004, they have won 10 straight, including a win last year, 39 to nothing. Let's start with Nourishell. I talked about a couple weeks ago, um, Nourishell, or was it, yeah, it was two weeks ago, Nourishell, their starting 11 I thought was very strong. Now, the big question was always about depth, right? And now we're seeing that right now, right? Health, to me, is the biggest question mark for Nourishell because obviously I don't get health reports. I'm not exactly sure who's going to be available, not available, but I did see, you know, some, you know, some film and I saw quarterback Luzzy, you know, leave the game. He didn't seem right playing last week. He didn't move that well. I think it affected his accuracy. And so I don't know his status. And this is an extremely important part because he's one of the best players in the class, right? Him being in the game drastically changes things. And I'm just going to assume, let's say he does play. Um, you know, he is one of the best quarterbacks. He's a very accurate guy, a guy who can maneuver the pocket pretty well. Um, but we know he's not 100%, right? So interested to see how that how that works um if he is back because that does change a completely dynamic of of probably the offensive game plan i also didn't see much of dawson last week as well and you know he's one of their big targets but what i did see they put in lee hester to fill in in that quarterback role and he had a rushing touchdown last week he also was big for them on defense with an int and a fumble recovery um, but he changes things right he's not as big as luzzy but what he does is you're going to see more quarterback runs if he's in there Right, you'll see more design quarterback runs, and I do think they rely on Raiden Davis. And he is a very good running back, and he had 262 rushing yards last week, Mars, and four touchdowns. The guy absolutely exploded last week, um, and they're going to have to rely on him, especially even with Luzzy in there, to try to balance his offense out a little bit. Um, and John James Fisco showed, again, at times last week, that you can run on them. Um, so it's going to be very interesting. I think they have to rely on him big time. Um, John James Fisco, like I said, they gave up some rushing yards. Can this offensive line open things up? They have the size advantage, in my opinion. Can they stay on blocks and move people is going to be huge, um, which can open up some big passing plays no matter who the quarterback is. Um, so we're going to see that. Defensively, Mars, big kudos to Taylor Red. He had a fantastic game last week. Nine tackles, a sack, three pass deflections. This is a guy in the first couple weeks of the season, he's been very active um, on the defensive side of the bowl. And he's going to have to lead the way. John Jay's Fishkill, they like, again, they go into the spread. You're going to see air raid stuff, but they like to run their quarterback as well. He's going to have to be very active, and then when they send him off the edge, he's got to get home. It's going to be huge, but it's not just him, right? Deshaun Benitez, 
He's a guy who's going to have to help dominate up front. This defensive line and linebacking crew is going to have to make plays in the, you know, in that box um, to help their secondary guys. Because if they have time, you know, they can get picked apart, right? So they got to create something. And obviously, when you look at these defensive backs, guys like Hester and Davis, you know, can they match up with these John James Fishko? They have the speed, right? So I do think they have some solid matchups. But can they win up front? To me, is the big question, especially in that front seven. Mars, what are your thoughts on Nurshell? Yeah, yeah Nurshell, I, I think, always had, had like a, a very you know high level, high level top eleven. But like you said, once they start, start having some major issues, issues that's, that's the, where, where the, the question's going to be here. And I think it really depends, depends on where Luzzy is and, and if Luzzy's playing, play, it will definitely, definitely help you off. It's big, big, like quite a lot. But I think offensively, they still have just a lot of weapons there. But obviously, you want to have all your best players on the field. I think the big question is going to be offensive line and whether or not they can open up some lanes. I think I, I, I would also say that, that the defensive question is really the other big thing. Like, I, when you look back at the Carmel game, obviously their uh, you know, show struggled to stop Carmel from scoring. Um, and obviously it's, it's been some time since then, but at the end of the day, it's really up to Nurshell's defense that they to set a lot of heat, especially on the pass rush, and try to win the trench because you're going to play up against a pretty solid off the line from John G. Fischel. So I think it's going to be a question of who wins the line of scrimmage will kind of push the game in their favor. Yeah, and I think it's a different style, right, because uh, John Jay's Fischel is going to try to pass the ball. Um, Carmel was a run-heavy offense, and they struggled to stop the run, but – do these DBs match up? I think that is a better matchup for them against a throwing team than than a running team. Um, but let's go to John Jay. And offensively, Mars, Feliciato, he had a rushing touchdown last week. Um, he's had five touchdowns the week before. This is a guy who's really the orchestrator of this offense, right? He's going to be throwing it. He's going to be running it. They like to spread it out. They also want to try to create matchups with their weapons and receivers. Um, and I tell you what, I thought he made some tight throws in coverage last week and i do think you're going to see again they're going to try to test this nurse shell secondary but they need to hold up up front for them to kind of pick apart this group because again if there is some pressure right if there is constant pressure and if the quarterback keeps getting hit i think it's going to go into nurse shell's favor if they go into this heavy air raid stuff um so it's going to be really important to hold up and pass bro how this offensive line hold up against nurse shell is going to be huge because if Feliciato has time, he could be pretty deadly. He made some really nice throws uh, last week um, that I saw. And he's got some guys who can make plays for them and win those contested catches. So that's going to be huge. Um, interesting to see the run game. You know, if they, because because like you said, Nurshell a couple weeks ago struggled to stop the run versus Carmel. Does, you know, John Jay kind of take a different approach? Um, you know, maybe they don't go as heavy rushing the ball and try to run a little bit um, if they think they can move some bodies. But I think what's going to be huge is the screen game. I think screen game is going to be really important. You know, Nurshell, very aggressive. Um, you can try to catch him off guard. And John Jay is one of the best screen teams in the class. Um, so that's something to keep an eye on. Defensively, again, we talked about the quarterback spot. Not exactly sure what quarterback is going to be playing. Maybe they'll be split in time. Who knows what's going to happen on Nurshell's side. But, again, no matter what quarterback's in, if Luzzy's there, it obviously changes how you want to play in the secondary um, you probably want to give them some different looks, some split coverages. But if Hester's there, you have to be aware of the quarterback runs, right? That's going to be a new uh, thing in this offense um, or more prominent in this offense when Hester's in. Um, and he's a guy who can run the ball. So you're going to have Raiden Davis. You're going to have Hester running the football. That combination, they have to be ready um, and have to be stronger up front in the front seven um, to kind of stop this rush attack. That could be very deadly when they get – I mean, Raiden Davis, I think, is, gonna, is a very solid running back. Um, as this offensive line can move people. Uh, Mars, what are your thoughts on John Jay? Yeah, yeah I mean, John, John, Jay, John Jay, I think, offensively, had, uh, just, just really needs to be consistent. I think they have been pretty solid. solid. I think Feliciano uh, has has been doing very well. well. I think he said he's been, been a leader, been a leader on, on offense, offense, and I think he's been like, orchestrating a lot of the big plays here. here. Uh, but, but I think the biggest thing is going to the offensive line. They need to keep the pass protection upright. They need to make sure that everything is solid, because if you give Feliciano some time, it, it's going to be a big play. play. I think that's, that's going to be the big thing, thing for me when I'm looking, looking at this. this. Um, and, and obviously, defensively, defensively, I think it's going to be limited in the quarterback play in their shell. And, and kind of, down, they, they have, have to really focus, get, uh, they they really focus, focus on, on the front seven, seven being as efficient as possible. They need to get to the quarterback on passes, and they need to keep the contain here because anything outside, their shell can really burn them. So they need to really hold that last scrimmage. You know, at least can keep everything inside. Yeah, holding that edge is going to be huge, Mars. My keys to the game um, for this game in particular, and you can make any comments on your matchup afterwards. 
My first one is big plays. And when I talk about big plays, that's 20 plus yarders. Um, and I think both these offenses are big play offenses. Nurse Shell, they want to get out on the edge. And when they get out on the edge, they have the speed to hit that home run play. Um, and so I know that that's what they're going to be attacking, right? And for John Jay, I think in the passing game, they also hit some big plays as well. Feliciano's not afraid to throw it downfield. He's not afraid to kind of throw it when corners and DBs are in phase with receivers. He doesn't have to be wide open for him to throw it. And he's going to test you, right? So look for the big plays, which team has the more big plays, I think is going to be a strong indicator on who wins this one. And the second thing, sacks and pressures, right? So it doesn't always have to be a sack, but pressures on the quarterbacks are going to be huge, whether it's Luzzi, whether it's Feliciato, which defensive front seven is going to generate more pressures and get them off their spot is going to be huge. Uh, Mars, any thoughts uh, on my keys or you want to give your matchup? I think that my, my biggest, biggest matchup is going to be probably, probably this, this you know, defensive, defensive front, front from their shell against, against, against this offensive, offensive front, front from John D. Fischio. Fischio. I think their defensive, defensive line, line for, 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 like, for, for as long as I can, I can remember, remember has always been, been a downward force, force whether, whether it's the defensive, defensive line and linebacker, and linebacker as well. So they, they really need to step up big time. time. I, I, I think the, the I people always, always call, like, they're, they're always, always like, like the, the iron curtain, I guess, of second one, one. Well, well, for, for, for a long time. And I think this year they kind of were not as efficient as they normally are. I think they need to step up the game, cause some mayhem in the past, and I think force turnovers. Nurse always was down defensively when they call a turnover and they get their playmakers in space, especially on those picks. Because whenever Nurse gets the pick, you know, it's, it's, it could be, be bad news. It could be a home run type of play. So forcing turnovers is going to be a big thing for Nurse I think this is going to be what kind of drives the game in their favor. Yeah, for my matchup, I'm actually not looking at the fronts. I'm looking at the back end, and that's these John Jay wide receivers versus the Nurse Shell defensive backs. I think they're very interesting in their matchups. My player to watch, though, Raiden Davis of New Rochelle. This guy, 260-plus yards rushing last week, Mars. No matter who the quarterback is, I think they have to give him the ball as much touches as possible, whether that's running the ball or even passing the ball. This is a guy who can move into the slot at times. Um, I think you got to get him the ball as much as possible. All right, Mars, you ready for the game picks for this week? Yeah, yeah man, I'm ready to roll. Uh, last week, before we get started, I went six and zero. Mars, you went seven and zero, and Lohud, our friends over there, at six and one. Now, if you look at our season record, I am twelve and zero in double A picks. Mars is thirteen and one, and Lohud is twelve and two. So we're all doing very well in our double A picks, and I am undefeated. So I want to keep it that way. Let's do it, Mars. First game up, Arlington two and one at Scarzel two and zero. This is a non-league game, and when I look at these two teams, we broke this thing down. Really impressed with the explosiveness of Scarsdale. They probably have the best player on the field um, outside probably Cubberly um, on the offensive side of the ball. Kobe Baldwin on Scarsdale, one of the best athletes. Um, you know, he is a big-time playmaker. But Arlington has the size. I love the way Arlington's defense has been playing, which I think is a notch above what Scarsdale is currently. I'm going to go with Arlington. I think Arlington is on a roll these last two weeks. I think it continues. But... Could they be overlooking this game a little bit? Carmel is next week. I mean, the following week, maybe a little bit. I think the game ends, starts pretty close for a while. Arlington pulls away at the end. Yeah, yeah I'm also going to go with Arlington. I think, I think that, that they, they have a size advantage. advantage. I think the offensive line really was going to put this game forward. forward. We, we already, already know, know that Scarzel kind of, kind of uh, uh, is going to have probably a lot of struggles against the heavy run. run. And, and we, we said, said that, hey, they can match up against that. Against that this game will be a lot closer, but I don't think they do. I think Arlington will win the heavy, heavy attack, and I think they're going to drain the clock. They're going to run in their favor once they get up. A few touchdowns. Oh, and before, when I said athlete, I meant football player, not uh, not athlete on, on that side. Let's go to the next game. Yonkers Brave 0 3 at Austin, who's 1 and 2. This is a league game. You know, last week, Yonkers Braid, they scored uh, their first touchdown last week. I thought offensively, they did make some plays. But defensively, Mars, they gave up close to 300 yards rushing. And for that reason, I'm going with Austin and Mars with Beno and the others running the football. I think they're going to find some success. question is, which defense is going to make more plays? I think Austin does. I'm going to go with Austin. Yeah, yeah, I'm also going to go with Austin. I feel like their rush offense has been pretty efficient. efficient. I, think I think that Yonkers, Yonkers Braid being, you know, having, having some difficulties with stopping the run, run Gives them the advantage here on the Next game, Amerinick 2-0 at White Plains, who's 0-2. This is a league game. 
Why playing shows that they can move the ball? It's kind of like their mantra over these last few years. They can, you know, move. They can create some chunk plays. They can create some space. They can get these playmakers in space. But the big question is defensively, Mars. Too many big plays they've given up defensively. Mamarnik has just been on an absolute roll offensively, and the defense has been holding up. And with that, I think on the road, Mamarnik is going to win this one. Yeah, yeah, I'm going to go with America as well. well. I think offensively, they've been, been top-notch top offense. And, and I just think when you compare white playing to America, their defense, America's defense has just been more consistent. So I'm going to go with America here. North Rockland one and two at Suffern, who's one and one. This is another league game. These teams have been playing each other for a while, Mars. This one was a hard one for me to pick. I think these two teams are very evenly matched up. Um, I think both defenses had pretty strong moments, but... North Rockland's offense just hasn't gotten to a rhythm. And again, it doesn't help when you're playing Monroe Woodbury and Arlington two out of the first three weeks. It's hard to get into a rhythm. But even against Mount Vernon in the first half, it just couldn't get consistency, right? So, you know, it's, for me, it's kind of like I got to see it to believe it at this moment. I think Suffern's offense has been a little bit more consistency. They're also at home. I'm going Suffern on this one in a very close game, but I think it's Suffern. Yeah, yeah I, I, I'm, I'm actually, actually going to agree with you here. here. I, I think Suffern's going to win this game. game. I, I agree with you. I think that North Rockland's been pretty... pretty yeah, they've, they've been put, put the, the, the bad hand, hand I guess you would call it. And I think, I think that they even have some really tough opponents. opponents. Um, but, but I also think the momentum is going to play a big role here. You know, having two street losses and on top of that, you're playing away with Suffern. I think that's going to be a really tough thing for North Rockland to pull off. I'm going to go with Suffern. Yeah, but North Rockland, not two street losses. Two street losses. Yeah. Sorry about that. Um, next game, RCK 0-2 at Carmel, who's 2-0. This is a league game. I'm not going to pick this game, but here's my thoughts on it. RCK, I thought actually moved the ball at times last week, but finishing drives has been an issue, right? Finishing drives has been a problem. Turnovers have been an issue. And defensively, at times, they can create stops, but it's the big plays. Too many 20-plus yarders that RCK has given up that has absolutely killed them. And for Carmel... You know, they won last week, and, you know, it, it, the scoreboard shows a very dominant performance. But I thought it was a very sloppy game for Carmel, and we all got to be honest watching that tape. Um, too many penalties, turnovers, too many lapses on defense. You know, Carmel, again, a lot of new guys starting for them, you know, and a lot of guys with not a lot of experience playing. You know, it's going to take time. They're not a finished product by any means, but... You know, Carmel got the job done, but that's kind of my two looks on this team, Mars. Who do you have winning and why? Yeah, well, I mean, looking at this game, game, I think that, that you know, look, looking, looking at last, last week, week, Carmel had some, some really, you know, bad, bad, bad looks, looks, I guess you would say, overall. They, they, they kind of let this game, game kind of simmer and kind of fall. I guess, fall. I guess they, they would fall down from what the performance they had against their shell. But even with that being said, I think Carmel was going to win here. I think Carmel, I think they went and pushed to the shove. I think they kind of show up when they need to. I think. Granted, it's not necessarily the greatest strategy to kind of ease up and then all of a sudden show up when you need to show up. I think they should be doing that consistently all the time. But it still shows you that they are still in the league of their own right now. They're still performing at a pretty high level, even though they were you know, keeping the game close to teams they probably should know. And I think that Carmel, when they want to, even when you guys start a new spot, when, when they, they want, want to, to, I think they, they, they show, show up and they, they show up full force. I think they're going to win all year. Don't overlook opponents. That's no, no they, they never, yeah, that, that, that should be something you learn right away. I know they have a lot of guys that, guys that you know, know, are, are new to, to different, different positions, positions and everything. Right. Like that, that should be the first thing you learn from, from last week. Is that when you start looking down on your certain past opponents, they can keep they can keep close. Right, They can be better because they're going to give you everything they have. You know, you know, who's just said say it doesn't, doesn't have those he But the question is going to be, I think just overall Carmel has just, has just has more overall and they're playing, playing at home. And I think that that's just, just going to give them more drive to, to, you know, to, 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 to play better than, than what they did last week. So I'm going to go with Yonkers Force 2-1 and one at Mount Vernon. 1-1 one and one again is the opening of the new stadium for Mount Vernon. Going to be a lot of hype. Um, I think it's going to be pretty exciting. Um, there's going to be a lot of excitement in the air. Mount Vernon's got a lot of speed, and they got playmakers. Um, but I'm going to go with Yonkers Force. I actually like the way they, they played for the most part against Carmel again. It ended up being 32-6, to six, right? So it ended up being a multi-score game that they lost to Carmel, and there's not a lot of moral victories. But, you know, I saw a lot of good things on tape um, from Yonkers Force, and, and Mount Vernon is going to be a very competitive game. I do think they have kind of similar playmakers on the outside. 
question is which offensive front and defensive front um, is going to make more plays. I think it's going to be very close, but I think Yonkers force wins this one, Mars, and ends up starting three and one. That would be pretty surprising. Yeah, yeah, I think, I think this, this is going to be a really, really interesting game. game. Yonkers, Yonkers Force definitely, definitely played really tough, tough last week against Carmel. Melbourne, Melbourne has a lot of weapons. weapons. But, but I'm going to go with the home team, team in the brand new stadium. stadium. They're, They're going to have the momentum, momentum on their side. I think they're going to go to Mount Vernon. It's going to shock everyone and say, hey, new stadium, new me. We're going away with the win. All right, the game of the week. Nurshell 2 and 1 at John J. East Fishco, who's 1 and 1 Mars. I'll let you go first. Who do you have winning and why? Yeah, yeah, I mean, this, this is, is actually a really interesting, interesting matchup. matchup. And like I said, I think this was a developing rivalry over the years. Um, but New Rochelle is, you know, I guess, I guess you would say, say in this rivalry, they've been dominating, right? I think that they've been kind of owning this this kind of matchup. But I would say, if you look at New Rochelle versus most opponents in Section 1, they've been kind of owning everybody if you're looking back at years past. Now, recent years, New Rochelle's been kind of losing more often to some of these teams because I think the talent level has been matching closer and closer to each other. Um, but New Rochelle still has a lot of weapons on offense. I think the biggest fear for them right now is the health, and whether or not a lot of their key players like Leslie will be healthy for this game. And like you said, we don't get the health, of course, so we don't know who's going to start or who's not. Um, but that's going to be the big question for New Rochelle. For John G's fish skill, obviously having you know some really good offensive power, like, you know, powerful players, like Feliciato, you know, that's you know going to be kind of showing up big time for this game, and he's going to have to step it up, right? This offensive line is going to also have to step it up, and they're going to have to open up the playbook and do some a mixture of a lot of different things that they've over the past, as well as the run be consistent, right? I think overall, I'm going to go with with obviously John Jay, go with Nerichel. I think Nerichel obviously is really struggling with their health right now, but I think that if they are all here and all playing then I think that they're going to have the advantage. And I know that maybe I'm taking a gamble on seeing if they're all healthy or not, but they still have a lot of playmakers even if Luzzy doesn't play. And I think that they have the ability to, once they get outside, that they're going to make some plays. This team will be close, but I think New Rochelle's going to get some turnovers and get the ball to the ball, get the ball back and make some big plays after that. So I'm going to New Rochelle. Well, you said a lot right there, but... Um... You know, again, I do agree with you. Nurse Shell, the big question mark is who is playing. We don't know exactly who's going to be starting, who's not going to be starting. We don't get those kind of reports. But Raiden Davis might be the best player on the field for this game. He had over 260 yards rushing. John Jay showed you can run a little bit on them, um, and he can hit some big plays. Nurse Shell has won 10 straight versus John Jay East Fishkill. I think the streak comes to an end, Mars. I'm going to say John Jay wins this one. John Jay being at home is huge. I don't. I do think it, even if everybody plays for Nurse Shell, they will not be 100%. Um, and I think it'll hurt them. But again, if everybody was healthy, ready to go, would things be different? Possibly, probably. Um, but I'm actually going to go the other way. I'm going to go with John J. Fishkill. Makes enough plays on the defensive side of the ball to prevent some big runs. It's going to be a close one, but I'm going John J. All right, everyone, that was our show. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Make sure to give a thumbs up and subscribe for future content. Enjoy this weekend's games, and we'll see you all very soon.